Hey T-Squad, it's me Keisha and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade, Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 5, Episode 16 Review. So we pick up where we left off last week with Amada meeting up with her children's father, Alan. He came up from the Dominican Republic so they can have a face-to-face conversation about uh, her not allegedly letting him see the kids. So she brings up the fact that when she had the girls... He didn't sign the birth certificate. Like he was literally there for the birth. And I think he left right afterwards or something like that. Um, And he says that she's using the kids to get with him, to be with him. Um, And that when she comes to the uh, Dominican Republic, she hit him up for the Peter Weedham. And he says that Ray J was right when he said that about her in the first half of the season, when she was dating Safari, that it looked like she was, you know, put on her freakum dress, you know, and was thirst trapped for her baby daddy. And he said that Ray J was absolutely 100% right. Now she denied this, but you could tell by the look on Amada's face when he said it, that he was telling the truth. And I mean, why would we not think that it's the truth when she's even said that she still love him and got feelings for him? So yeah, she was hitting him up when she went to the Dominican Republic. But my thing is, how you hitting somebody up for Peter Weeda and he ain't even helping you take care of your kids, girl? Like, what are you doing? Like, Amada is just all over the place. And this season, I like I said, I really see her for her works now. And she is a piece of work. She really honestly is. Um, So then he hits us with a one hit a quitter when he was like, I was married when I met you and you knew that. And she looked like, I cannot believe you just said that. I cannot believe you just put me on blast like that. And I was like, Amada, you sat up here this whole time trying to act like you was the victim. And I can't believe he did me like this. And he ain't a good father to my kids. And he don't want to be here with us. And he this and he that. Meanwhile, You knew this man was married the whole time when you got with him. And she admits it. And she said, you told me to be patient so you could leave her. Girl, you getting everything that you deserve at this point. Because you knew better than to mess with a married man in the first place. And then on top of that, he proposed to her and she said, yes. How you proposing and you married? Huh? Amada is a snake. She is manipulative. She plays victim. Everybody is against her. She doesn't take accountability for the stuff that she does. Like, I'm looking at her like, I cannot believe this girl. Up here willingly, knowingly messing with a married man. Why would you do that to another woman? Obviously, you don't care about women. I mean, that's obvious by the way you treat your so-called friends on this show. But you ain't ish. You really truly ain't. You set up her not only was dating this married man, got pregnant by him, and then accept a proposal for him. But then you want to act all shocked when he switch up on you? Girl, beat your feet because I can't with you. I cannot. And she said that she still expected his proposal. She accepted his proposal because... Uh, he kept on telling her that he didn't want to be with the wife and all of this type of stuff, girl, whatever. And so he was like, I do want to see my kids. And he was like, I want to take them to the Dominican Republic to be around my daughter and my family. And she says, no, he can see the kids there in Miami. Um, she says, you know, they can't talk to her and tell her what's going on and all of this, this, that, and the third and all of that. Amada. Amada, you keep on making excuses of why he can't do this. Everything got to be on your terms. That's they father. If you so afraid of having your kids around him alone, then you shouldn't have laid down and gotten pregnant by him. Let that man take his kids and be with his children so he can build a relationship with them outside of you. And if it's a situation where you got to fly down there and he got the kids, but you still in the same vicinity, do so. But you're honestly making it hard for him. You really, truly are. Um, 
And she even says that he could see the kids at her house. And he was like, I will never see them in your house because I don't trust you or your mother. Anything could happen to me. You don't have love for men. You don't believe in Jesus. And I was like, well, 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 well. I thought she did believe in God. She always talking about God this and God that and praying and all of that. So she an atheist. But my thing is with Alan too. Why you nutting up in a woman that don't believe in God and that you see now don't love men or mama don't love men that you think that they will do something to you? Like both of y'all stuck on stupid. Y'all deserve each other. Y'all really honestly do. And the hell that y'all are in now is a making of your own. And both of y'all are getting exactly what y'all deserve. So at this point, he said he going to go the legal route. And Amara was like, you know, um, have I put you on child support this whole time? And he was like, no, because you know I'll have rights then. And so she then gets to talking about how the reason why she didn't put him on child support is because it's expensive having the twins. It costs like $100,000 to give birth to them and, you know, the clothes and the milk and the daughter, da, 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 da. And she said, you ain't had the money. And so he was looking like, oh, so you trying to call me broke now? And so I could tell that that, that stung him. It was some truth in that. And so um, he was like, you're evil. I wish I never met. I wish I never met you that day. If I could take it back, I wish I would have never met you. And that, at that point, I guess she'd heard enough, honey, and gotten her feelings and grabbed her purse and skedaddled on. But I was like. I'm glad he exposed her because Amada would have continued on with this narrative like she was this innocent little angel that got played once again by a man when you keep on putting yourself in predicaments to get hurt. You knew Safari wasn't about ish when you got with him. MJ, he sold you a representative of himself, you know, but at least he treated you good. He ain't cheat on you. He ain't had the money, <laughs> you know, but... Ever since MJ situation, like you, you bring this stuff on yourself. You really honestly do. You and your mama seem like y'all are very miserable people. And I think that your mama don't even know to the extent of the things that you be out here in these streets doing. I bet you the mama didn't know that he was married. I bet you. I bet you. Yeah, she a piece of work. Amada's a piece of work. So I don't feel bad for her at all with the Eliza situation of it all, with Eliza messing with Safari. I don't feel bad about it at all because she ain't care about that woman, husband she was sleeping with and had twins with. And all on national television with it. Girl, I don't know who the wife is, but baby, I would have been catching the first flight whooping you and his, okay, for old and new. Bring the wife on the show. How about that, producers? Find the wife down there in the Republic and bring her on the show. That'll make for a great season. Um, What's that? Season six. Because, yeah, Amada and him, they both need their butts whoop. Um, So then after that, we see Zoe at Flo's hair salon getting her hair done. Gael is there getting her nails done or something like that. They all cool with each other. And Hot Topic comes up. And Flo and Gael both say that the reason why Hot Topic don't like them is because they homegirl um, dated her baby daddy first. Like the, they homegirl was with Hot Topic baby daddy. They broke up. He, uh, I guess, got with Hot Topic or whatever at that point, but still was saying that he wanted to be with his ex and all of this, this, that, and the third. So they're saying that's the reason why Hot Topic don't like them because... The homegirl basically is the one he's in love with, I guess. Um, so Flo says um, that she is going to, not Flo, Gael was like, you know, I got something for her because Moosey <laughs> is a scammer and I'm going to expose her. So um, Trick Daddy got the double mint twins child at the crib and he has gotten them a record deal with Slip and Slide Child. Why? They can't rap. They have no stage performance. Are they cute? Are they a cute little gimmick? Are they like this generation's versions of Malika and Khadijah? Yeah, but let them act. Music is not their ministry because them going like this on that stage, like they was in a high school dance recital. 
It was like, what is happening? No, 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 absolutely not. No, mm -mm. we don't believe you. We are not going to, no, uh uh, you're not about to play with our time. No. So his son, Jaden, um, is mad because. He wants to be in the industry. He wants to be a rapper, but he made a deal with his father that he would graduate college first. So he's literally in his last year of college, literally about to graduate, will be the first person in their family to graduate college. And, you know, Trick want to make sure that he's straight, that he got that degree and everything before he put him on. And his son is like, why won't you let me go now? Like, I'm ready now. Like, everybody else getting opportunities, but I'm still being held back. And Trick was like, just make sure you get this paperwork done first. And I, I get where Trick is coming from because the education is way more valuable than a rap career, especially with the industry being so flooded. You know, I think that he he a nice looking little boy. He not ugly or nothing like that. I think that with him having Trick Daddy as a cosign and Trina and all of them people, I think that he could probably sift through the weeds and make a name for himself, maybe. Um, but you just never know. You really never know. So I think that he should listen to his father on this one. Um, Shay visits her mama with her baby and she immediately breaks down and her mama was like, what's going on? And she tells her mama that the doctor told her she had a high risk pregnancy because her fibroids came back and that when she went to her checkup, they couldn't find a heartbeat and that she lost the baby which was really sad. And that's the reason why we see her now not pregnant because she didn't unalive it. It sadly, you know, passed away. Um, and she's really distraught about this. She's mad with God questioning why God took her baby, all of this stuff. And I was like, well, my love, don't forget you. You let them words come out your mouth that I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't even want no. You got to be careful what you say out your mouth, girl. So don't be cursing God the way she did in that scene. Talking some God, why God take my baby? You was the one saying you didn't want it. You speak life and death with your tongue, Miss Girl. Um, so at this point, um, the doctor said that she could either let the baby pass naturally or she can have it surgically removed. She does not want to continue to walk around with this unalive fetus in her of course so she is going to have the surgery and so she asked her mama to be there for her and her mother was like of course I will be there for you no matter what I might not like Fabo or whatever but I want what's best for you and so she, her mama asked has she told Fabo and she was like nah she ain't told me it and I was like what kind of relationship you got with this man that you can stand 10 toes down with him defending him but then you don't even feel comfortable enough to tell him that you to miscarry your child like, make it make sense, Shay. You just as dumb as a model. Like, both of y'all are just dumb dumbs. Oh, my God. And she crying about how Fabo try to control everything. He try to control her, the way she parent their daughter, the household, her business, and her finances. How he going to control your finances? Let me find out. He over there spending your money and telling you what to do with it. Let me find out, Shay, because that's what it's giving. Because how he even, how he even parting his lips to tell you what to do with your money? Yeah, it's some ish there with that. Mm hmm. So, um, she begged her mama not to tell nobody, not her brothers or her father or nobody. So the mama was like, "I won't say nothing to nobody." Um, Trick Daddy sit down with his father. We finally meet Mister Big Daddy. <laughs> And Trick Daddy Daddy is nice looking. I was like, so Trick must look like some either his mama or somebody up in the family tree because the daddy look good, child. Um, the daddy used to be a hustler and all of this stuff. And um, he asked Trick, why is he holding Jaden back from being a rapper? Because Trick was saying that all of these new rappers into, you know, the drug scene and popping pills and talking about, blickies and unaliving people and he don't want that for his son and then he don't want a bunch of uh hanger ons around him and all that stuff and the father was like why not you did the same thing but i'm like okay that don't mean that he want that same thing for his son if he can shield him from that you encouraged for him to be out here in the streets 
But I'm happy that Trick is doing it the opposite way and not encouraging that lifestyle. You know, now the one thing that the father said that I did appreciate was like, you need to guide him. Be that driving force behind him to make sure that he's straight. Now, I get that, but I 100% agree with Trick. Trick, do what you've been doing. Don't listen to your daddy. He's stupid. Um, So, Brooke Valentine is back on our television screens. She will be flying back and forth from Miami to L.A. She's working on new music. And she visits Amada at Amada's house. Amada is painting the walls white. I was like, about time, because I'm so sick of that house looking like Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons. Ugh. So they sit down and Amala tells her about Alan calling her a side chick. On time, so he called me a side chick, and Brooke was like, "What?" She was like, "Yeah, but come to." F she was like, "Yeah, he was married or whatever." But she said it in a way where it's like she found out that he was married here recently, and all of this stuff. Like she ain't tell the story the right way, and that's why I was like, "This is what Amala do to get people to sympathize with her. She don't be telling the stories and stuff right." I was like, you was a tricky little something. So um, she says that she feels betrayed by everybody. I was like, did you feel um, some type of way when you betrayed that woman, huh? uh, that, that, that man you were sleeping with and got kids by wife? Did you feel like you betrayed her? Nope. You ain't care. So don't nobody care about you, homewrecker. So she says that she's going to um, go to Bobby's party and confront Eliza about, you know, talking about her and saying that she wasn't a good friend and all this type of stuff. So Shay calls Fabo and tells him that he got to come there ASAP because she got to go to the hospital and she need him there by her side. But she won't tell him why. I would have hung up on her because, girl, how old are we? We're not about to play these games when you're pregnant with my child and you're telling me it's something important and it's bad and you need me to come up there, but you won't tell me why. Like, Shay is like Shay is really blowing me. Like, Shay is an absolute idiot. And I just cannot with her. I would have been like, what What are you doing? Like, girl, now this is when Fabo needed to be going off on somebody was right then and there because like why are you what what is all this going around and around and sir get off my line oh my god so after that it's bobby's party he's having a masquerade party Flo is there with gael and amada shows up amada come over and speak to them and Flo asks amada is she done with safari and she was like why she was like, I want to know, like, what's going on? And I think it was Gael or somebody was like, why are you questioning her about Safari? She was like, because I want to know. And so Amada was like, I don't know. And I was like, well, now you putting it out there, Thomas, and you don't know. I'm guessing, I'm knowing Amada. She said, I don't know. I, I might not be or whatever or no, whatever she said. Because she probably was looking like, what, you trying to get with him? So now nah, let me put my, my titty on the table to let you know that that's mine. That's me. And I'm looking at, uh, once again, playing games with folks. But Flo wanted to know because she felt some type of way about her line, saying that her dating safari was a storyline and all this, that, and the third. She was like, because now people go, you know, questioning whether my stuff is real and my stuff is 100% real. I ain't play playing for the cameras. And she had an attitude about that. And I don't blame Flo because it does take down the integrity of the show. And Amada, once again, you out here playing victim and playing games and doing all this extra stuff and then want to sit back and be like, did I do that? Like, oh my God. Like, get her off my show. Get her off the show at this point. Like, I do not like Amada no more. She is excommunicado over here. So Amada was like, well, okay, you know, see you guys later, you know, offended. <laughs> so, um, Amada then front confronts um Eliza for talking about her. They go back and forth and then they end up making up. But Eliza still hasn't told her that she messing around with Safari. And now at this point I don't even care. Um Bobby confronts Flo about bringing Gael because he didn't invite her. <laughs> so um Joy tells Trina and them about what happened between Hot Topic and Zoe. At this point, Hot Topic is there. And so everybody was like, you know what? You know, we ain't here for all of that. We just gonna have a good time. So Bobby goes up to give his speech for his birthday. And before he can even get the speech popping, we see Flo and Gael walk up the, the banister up the steps. 
And he was like, Gaia, what you up there doing? And she was like, I, I wanted to give some partying gifts or something like that. And she starts throwing down T-shirts. And then Flo goes into a box or whatever and pulls out a bunch of uh, wanted papers <laughs> with Hot Topic face on it. So everybody was like, oh, that's wrong. That's shady. This, this, that, and the third. And I was like, that is hilarious. <laughs> Because who got time to be spending money on this? So Hot Topic say it's fake news and people always want to hate on her. Girl, you did it. Because even Bobby in his confessional was like, you know, people change their lives. <laughs> you can't hold people past against them. And all of this, this, that, and the third. But girl, don't be coming on this show acting like you that girl. And you was out here being that girl by stealing from other people, ma'am. No, you can't talk about nobody. Like you said, the first thing that came out your mouth about Zoe is she fat. Well, I'd rather be fat than a thief and a criminal. How about that? So um, they going back and forth and Flo end up tossing a drink on her. And like some of the drink did end up like landing on Trina. So Trina at this point is livid. And she was like, get this out. Get this up. So high topic trying to get to her, but security not letting her loose. And Trina mad. Tell some y'all, that ain't right. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. You know, Trina get to doing all that yelling and fast talking and all of that stuff. Acting like she's six from um Blossom. <laughs> she's talking about some, um, I'm sick of these. Yeah, oh, they don't know what they're dealing with. We about to bring the smoke. We about to take it to the streets. <laughs> and I'm like, what? When she said we gonna take it to the streets, Jesus, I was like, is this bring it <laughs> Miami edition? What is going on? So Trina going off, doing all of that, yelling and screaming and hooping and hollering as she do. And the episode go off, child. But it seems like on next week episode, they gonna get Flo and Gael but back, honey. And it's gonna be funny. But um, this was a really good episode. I'm gonna give last night's episode of Miami and A, I really enjoyed it because I'm so happy that now we see Amada for her works and for who she really truly is. And uh, I'm so happy to see Brooke Valentine back. She's always been one of my favorite love and hip hop uh, stars. She made her mark on Hollywood. Like Brooke was so funny, so funny to me um, and crazy. And I'm here for it. And I can't wait to see what she's going to bring on this show. And I'm actually liking the, um, Flo and Guy yell against Trina and them. Like, it's so funny to me because it's so juvenile in high school, but I'm actually here for it. So y'all let me know down below in the comment section, what was your favorite part of last night's episode? Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. Oh, you guys, I forgot. Um, I'm going to go live Friday and do a live makeup tutorial for you guys. You've been asking. Now, I'm going to do this makeup tutorial. And if y'all don't watch it and it don't get the views, I'm not doing it no more. Because every time I do a makeup tutorial, y'all say y'all want it. But then the numbers don't be about nothing. Okay? So, I'm going to go live Friday. Do a makeup tutorial. We can chit chat. All of that. So, It'll probably be like mid afternoon or something like that. Also, I'm about to start the process of um, decorating the last room in my house, which is going to be my closet room. So I'm going to vlog it and take you guys on that journey with me from beginning to end, putting the furniture and stuff together, painting and all of that stuff. So be on the lookout for that. That series will be starting this week. So yeah, love you guys and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.